Please take your seats. Our event will begin momentarily. Um, do you want me to leave music up for uh, this right now? Please welcome our speakers for today's event, including Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Premier Doug Ford, GM President Mark Royce, and special guests. And now please turn your attention to the stage for a special message from the Chair and CEO of General Motors, Mary Barra. Hello everyone. Today is a historic day as we celebrate the start of Canada's first full-scale EV plant building Bright Drop Zevo 600 electric delivery vans. After so much great work, our team in Ingersoll now joins the ranks of the world's first EV manufacturing plants. You are making history and advancing GM on our path to a zero emissions future. We need everybody in on this journey together. On behalf of General Motors, I want to express our thanks to Prime Minister Trudeau and Ontario's Premier Doug Ford for their leadership, partnership, and support. We would not be here without you and your teams. I also want to recognize our talented and dedicated employees, our CAMI team members, our GM Canada engineering team, and the Bright Drop team. Today is the start of a very bright future. Congratulations as well to Dennis Pimenta, our CAMI plant director, and Mike Van Vogel, the chair of Local 88, and Bright Drop CEO Travis Katz for your leadership and collaboration. This is a big day for everyone. Together, we are going to deliver a better future for our customers, our planet, and generations to come. Congratulations. Please welcome President and Managing, Direct Managing Director of GM Canada, Marisa West. Wow, good afternoon. It's amazing to see everyone here today. Our priority is of course to take care of your safety and I want you to know that we have trained representatives on site who will direct you where to go in the event of an emergency evacuation or take shelter situation. But we begin today by respectfully acknowledging that we are on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and Six Nations. We offer our gratitude to our First Nations and we recognize their history, spirituality, culture, and stewardship of the land. We are especially honored to be joined today by our special guests, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, 
Premier Doug Ford, Minister Vic Fideli, and Unifor National President Lana Payne. I would also like to acknowledge Brian Petrie, Mayor of Ingersoll, and our elected and government officials joining us today. Some other very special guests are joining us from GM, including Gerald Johnson, Vice President Global Manufacturing and Sustainability, Steve Carlisle, Executive Vice President and President North America, Mike Perez, Vice President North America Labor Relations, and Steve Horniak, Chief Commercial Officer of Bright Drop. I also want to thank our hosts for today, CAMI Plant Director Dennis Pimenta and Local 88 Chairman Mike Van Bokel. Thank you for joining us to make a big Canadian milestone. The team began retooling CAMI for Bright Drop production on May 1st. And just seven months later, the Bright Drop and CAMI teams have completed their first Zevo 600 here in Ingersoll, making CAMI Assembly Canada's first full-scale electric vehicle plant. fitting that Kathy Gillespie, the chief engineer for Bright Drop, drove the Zevo 600 out today. Thank you, Kathy. As Mary said in her video, today is the start of a very bright future. Canada's EV future is no longer something that's on the horizon. It's here and it's now, and that's good for Canada, and that's good for the planet. None of this would have been possible without the support of our amazing teams here, or without the partnership of the governments of Canada and Ontario. To tell you more, it is my pleasure to introduce one more very special guest, and the leader of GM's global EV transition, our GM president, Mark Royce. Well, thank you, Marissa, and my sincere thanks to Prime Minister Trudeau, Premier Doug Ford, and Unifor President Lana Payne for your partnership. Today shows the true potential of General Motors' EV strategy. It also represents the best of GM, fast, flexible, and first. Bright Drop is the fastest product launch in our history from concept to commercialization in less than two years, accelerating our ability to serve bright drop customers and reduce tailpipe emissions from last mile deliveries. More than four people are currently working here as part of the launch team preparing the new CAMI EV assembly to start our first full shift of production right now in January. Congratulations to the entire Bright Drop and Cami team on your record launch and becoming Canada's first full-scale EV plant. Great job. I also want to congratulate Bright Drop CEO Travis Katz, who is leading the Bright Drop business as we reach the tipping point for EV adoption and the shift toward green energy solutions. That's happening right now, and Travis is leading it for us. Bright Drop includes an entire ecosystem tailored to the needs of last mile delivery companies. And the advantages Bright Drop offers, including reductions in tailpipe emissions, in fuel costs, and in congestion in our cities, are simply staggering. Bright Drop offers the Trace Cart, developed and tested largely by our Canadian engineering and innovation teams 
right here in Canada as well. In testing in Toronto and New York, the trace cars improved delivery efficiency by 25%, reducing congestion in crowded city centers. Every Bright Drop Zevo van built here will save our customers up to $12,000 in fuel and operating costs annually compared to traditional diesel vans. That's a big deal. At full-scale manufacturing of Bright Drop Zevo, electric delivery vans begin our, our customers replace their gasoline and diesel <coughs> fleets, greenhouse gas tailpipe emissions will decrease exponentially. In fact, we estimate over the next 10 years, the fleet of Bright Drop vans built at Cami will prevent 22 million tons of tailpipe emissions, 10 times more than the greenhouse gas emissions from all GM operations in Canada over the same time frame. That is something to celebrate as the shift to electric vehicles is changing the world right now today. And none of this would have been possible without our great partners. Again, on behalf of Mary Barra and all of us at GM, I would like to personally thank Prime Minister Trudeau and Ontario's Premier Ford for their leadership and partnership in help us, helping us become a vibrant, electrified automotive industry right here in Canada. It is an honor to have you both here today to say a few words. So it is my honor to introduce the Prime Minister, Mr. Justin Trudeau. Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you, Mark. It's so great to see you and Marisa and everyone here from GN who made this happen. Happy to be here with uh, Lloyd Longfield, uh, who's a regional MP and a hardworking member of our amazing Auto Caucus. Uh, Travis of Bright Drop, uh, Lana of Unifor, and of course, Premier Ford uh, and Minister Fideli, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I want to uh, say hi to Brian Petrie as well, the new mayor of Ingersoll. Congratulations, look forward to working with you. Uh, look forward to showing up with lots of great announcements, uh, but uh, this is a big one. Um, it's great to be with all of you to share this really good news today. But we wouldn't be here today, even for all the hard work everyone sitting in this front row did, we would not be here today if it wasn't for these people, for all of the workers here that made this happen. Because, you know, I get to travel around the world and pitch to a whole bunch of different companies. Last time, uh, I was uh, standing with Premier Ford, an announcement like this. It was uh, an announcement at Nokia uh, that featured a real strong emphasis on research and development here in Canada for the Finnish telecommunications giant. We pointed out there was, you know, millions of dollars invested by governments to draw them in. But every government in the world would love to invest millions of dollars to draw in places like this. There's a huge competition around the world to try and make sure uh, that we are part of the future, that we're securing future for communities, for workers and their families. And yes, government can step up with money, and we do. But the best selling point we have is always invariably and inevitably the extraordinary workers of plants like this. So thank you very much for everything you guys are doing. You see, eight months ago, we announced investments to retool the Cami EV assembly plant here in Ingersoll. Then GM began working to get Cami ready for electric vehicle production. And today, as Mark pointed out, in record time, we're opening the first full-scale commercial electric vehicle plant in Canada. Aujourd'hui, on ouvre la première usine à grande échelle de production de véhicules électriques commerciaux au pays. On maintient des milliers d'emplois pour la classe moyenne. C'est une excellente nouvelle pour nos travailleurs automobiles. Et c'est une bonne nouvelle pour notre environnement, parce que c'est en faisant la transition vers des véhicules électriques qu'on s'assure que nos enfants aient de l'air pur et des bons emplois pour des générations à venir. When we invested in GM's project, we knew we'd get results. Now, as the first Bright Drop electric vans come off the line, we get to see these results. 
and it's great to be here with Doug and Vic. Uh, but usually there's four of us for these announcements, and our friend Francois-Philippe Champagne, who worked incredibly hard as industry minister, uh, if he were here, he'd be pointing out, Mark, uh, the time of the text he sent you uh, to get this rolling. Uh, he is uh, tireless, uh, as all our team members are, in drawing in announcements, and he really wishes he could be here today. Uh, but we have him over in Europe right now, securing more deals uh, for more uh, workers across this country to be able to deliver uh, for uh, more jobs for Canadians. And of course, I want to thank the people at GM and Unifor and Premier Ford and his team for working together as partners to make this happen. Uh, but mostly, again, we need to talk about Canadian workers uh, who your skills, your ambition, and your hard work get the economy going and help us convince big companies like GM to continue investing in Canada. You know, just a few weeks ago, I was in the Indo-Pacific to strengthen our economic ties with the region, to create good jobs in Canada and more opportunities for our businesses. We know uh, how important Asia is to the growing global economy. So during that G20 in Indonesia, I spoke to a room filled with business leaders to pitch them on what we're doing here in Canada, on why investing in Canada is exactly the right thing. So it's not just people who are as close as GM is, who sees up front uh, all the potential that Canada has, but people from around the world noticing what Canada has. We have the values that make us reliable partners to invest in, to grow in, to commit to generations worth of work. I've uh, talking with uh, some of the workers here this morning, been here for 25, 30 years seen all the different iterations of it. And that's what people get. When they invest in Canada, you get that reliability for decades, for generations to come. We also have the raw materials that, make th that the global economy needs. We know uh, that there's a lot of questions a whole bunch of companies around the world have around the supply of essential goods, of raw materials, of energy they're going to need. We've seen Russia as an unreliable partner. We've seen increasing challenges from China. We know we need to be delivering those raw materials from reliable, friendly, uh, environmentally protecting countries like Canada. And there's a huge amount of interest in Asia and around the world at Canada being part of how we move forward as a world. And most importantly, of everything I was selling businesses around the world on, Canadians themselves. Our strong, educated, diverse workforce that is the envy of the world. With immigration, we're actually growing faster than most other G7, than all other G7 countries. Our education system, our livable communities, the opportunities we have to build bright futures for people from coast to coast to coast, despite and because of the transformations in the global economy gets that mix of ambition and forward thinking, and roll up your sleeves hard work that has characterized and defined Canadians for the longest time. We're creating a whole supply chain here in Canada so that auto workers here in Ontario will be able to build electric vehicles with batteries made in Quebec from nickel, mined in northern Ontario, and lithium from Alberta, with made in Canada steel and aluminum that is some of the cleanest in the world. And I can tell you that international investors are noticing. For example, they're noticing full on that with our government's efforts, we've gone from fifth in the world to second in the world when it comes to the battery supply chain. We're growing a strong middle class in Canada so workers, their families, and everyone can succeed. Il y a encore des politiciens qui pensent qu'il faut faire un choix entre l'environnement et l'économie. Mais quand on voit ce qui est en train de se bâtir ici et ailleurs au pays, c'est évident que la protection de l'environnement et l'économie doivent aller ensemble. L'usine dans laquelle on se trouve aujourd'hui projette de fabriquer 50 000 véhicules utilitaires électriques par année d'ici 2025. C'est un résultat concret c'est exactement ce qu'on va continuer de livrer. We know the world is changing. We know we're facing 
significant challenges in the way we do things and the way we need to do things to make sure the future generations have the best chances ever. But that's what we're up to as a task. You know, seven years ago when we first took office, we talked about the fact that climate change was both a massive challenge and a real opportunity. Well, for the first few years, we ended up talking much more about the challenge it represented than the opportunity. But over the past while, with a whole bunch of great announcements uh, with Doug and with premiers across the country that go straight to this, people are seeing tangibly that this means good jobs now and good jobs reliably into the future. That's what people want for their families, for their communities, for their country, and that's what together we're delivering. Thank you very much, and now it's my uh, intense pleasure to introduce my friend, Premier Doug Ford. Doug. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. What a great morning it is here. And, and let me thank the Prime Minister for joining me today to celebrate an amazing Made in Ontario milestone and I also uh, want to give a shout out to my number one salesperson. I always call him our best salesperson in Ontario, Minister Vic Fideli, and, and your partner, Minister Champagne, as well. You both work so hard. And my great MPP, Ernie Hardiman, and Mayor Brian, Brian Petrie. And I have to tell you, folks, I, I called Ernie the other day. It was yesterday. It was his birthday. He served with my dad. So what are you, 25 years old now? Uh, you, you know something? All the very best, Vic. I want to thank the team from CAMI. As the Prime Minister said, you know, this plant wouldn't even be here without folks like yourself, hardworking people, and we want to thank you. Vic played a major part in making today possible with his tireless efforts showing the world there's no better place to invest than right here in Ontario. Let me also thank the team at GM, as I just mentioned, but Marisa, thank you so much. Dave, thank you, and Mark for inviting us to celebrate this incredible uh, milestone because GM is making history with the first full-scale electric vehicle production facility in Canada, which will be their EV hub for the Bright Drop commercial vehicle line. And our government couldn't be prouder to support GM's incredible $2 billion investment manufacturing and R&D with our own support of more than $250 million. And I need to thank the federal government who have matched our investment and shown their commitment to making Ontario a world leader in EV manufacturing. The results we're seeing are nothing short of exceptional. Over the past two years, we have secured game-changing investments in our auto sector with more than $16 billion in new investments, including more than $12.5 billion for made in Ontario electric vehicles and battery production. These investments are being made in communities across the province, from Windsor to Alliston to Oshawa, and today right here in Ingersoll. These investments in hybrids electric vehicles and EV batteries will create jobs now and in the future. They're putting us on the path to being a global auto manufacturing powerhouse once again, from the critical minerals needed to produce batteries in the north to our skilled auto workers in southern uh, Ontario and clean steel manufacturing in Hamilton at the FASCO and Algoma up in Sault Ste. Marie, powered by clean Ontario-made energy, we're leveraging every part of the EV supply chains. We have everything we need to make the cars of the future in Ontario by Ontario workers from start to finish. GM's commitment to this plant is a massive vote of confidence in our province and our incredible workers. Together with partners like GM, we're building Ontario for today and for tomorrow. But my friends, we know there's more to do. We must stay focused and we can't take anything for granted. As we navigate global economic uncertainty, our government has been hard at work building an economy that can weather any storm, an economy that never loses sight of what's most important, helping people succeed 
helping workers succeed. That starts with creating economic conditions that attract investments and growth in good jobs. We cut red tape to reduce the cost of doing business in Ontario by $7 billion annually, year after year. We've kept taxes for people and businesses low. We're investing in skilled trades and a workforce that's prepared for the jobs of today and tomorrow. We're building roads and highways like Highway 413, the Bradford Bypass. We're investing a billion dollar investment to build the road to the Ring of Fire. And we're making investments to improve the province's competitive advantage and ensure that Ontario remains the greatest place anywhere to live, work, and raise a family. And while the world faces economic uncertainty and our challenges with inflation are not over, one thing I have complete confidence in are the people of Ontario. There are no harder working people on earth, and I know that together we will accomplish incredible things. Together we will build Ontario with a great workforce. And I have to give a shout out to Lana. Lana, you've been a true leader uh, for Unifor. You've been a true leader with ourselves. And, and thank you for uh, helping out in, in different areas uh, of the province. I'll leave it at that. But uh, I'll tell you, what a blessing it is for Unifor to have a great leader uh, like Lana Payne. So thank you. And it's uh, now I want to just say, God bless the people of Ontario. I do want uh, Vic to come up and say a few words before we officially uh, introduce Lana. So if you could come up and say a couple words, that'd be great. Well, we've heard all the numbers, Premier, eight months ago, uh, $2 billion announced by GM, uh, $259 million in, uh, injection from the province and from the federal government. So to Marisa and to Mark and to Travis and to Dave, we would say on behalf of the people of Ontario, thank you very much for that deep investment, that deep confidence and the hope that you've given to all of the people of Ontario. It's so exciting to see. I, I would think about William Durant in 1908 and, and that milestone of the first, uh, the first General Motors product. And I would think of Colonel Sam McLaughlin down at the other end of Oshawa and think what he would be thinking when you hear the word historic and the word milestone. Well, this is another one of those days. This is an historic day. This is a milestone day, the first ever. Uh, uh, full-scale production of EVs in the country, and here it is right here in Ontario. Congratulations to all of you at General Motors. Thank you. So now I would like to introduce the champ of all champs, uh, Lana Payne, the, the president of Unifor National President. Thank you. Wow, this is quite a room. Good afternoon, uh, everybody, and uh, Solidarity Local 88. Uh, it's an honor to be here uh, standing with you in this impressive facility. Of course, I want to recognize Marissa, Travis, and the entire GM team and Bright Job Drop team for their work bringing this outstanding electric vehicle here to Ingersoll at home in Canada. I also want to thank Prime Minister Trudeau, Premier Ford, as well as Ministers Champagne and Fideli for their um, wavering commitment to growing the Canadian auto footprint. Very important work that you've all been doing. What we're witnessing today is history in the making. For nearly 40 years, CAMI has produced some of the highest quality vehicles on offer anywhere in the world. That's a testament to these workers, to the members of Local 88, to their skill, to their sweat, and to their determination. It's a testament to Brent and Mike and the local union leadership for their foresight, for their commitment to their members, and their commitment to this community. This EV shift is bringing Canada's net zero ambitions clearly into focus. How we use this moment to build a stronger economy 
to manage the transition for workers to grow good union jobs. Everyone got that? Good union jobs will ultimately determine the success of this effort. There are a lot of eyes right now set squarely on this facility. Many stories will be told and studies written about what happens here at CAMI in the months and years to come. You, my friends, are the torchbearers. You are the front lines of this important electrification project and I know you will succeed because Unifor members at CAMI have always risen to the occasion. Auto workers and workers across the independent parts supply chain in this country have always risen to the challenge. This day is the beginning of a long and very exciting journey and we're very proud to be part of it at Unifor. I'd like to now introduce Steve Horniak Chief Commercial Officer for Blue Drop, and thank you very much for your time today. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, before we jump in, just a, a quick thank you to Travis Katz from Bright Drop for his leadership and really taking the company from a visionary perspective to where it is today. Unfortunately, Travis is ill and one is unable to make it here today. Uh, but again, thank you very much, Travis. I know you're watching us live from home and we really do appreciate all your leadership. Um, it's my great pleasure to be here today celebrating GM and Bright Drop's collaboration with our Canadian colleagues and the remarkable achievement of retooling CAMI in record time. As Mark mentioned, demand for last mile delivery continues to grow and EV adoption has reached a tipping point. I'm proud that Bright Drop is on the leading edge meeting customers' needs and driving progress. We began with a vision transforming last mile delivery and have already have products on the road making a difference today. With CAMI's help, we'll still be turning hundreds of vehicles that we have out there today into thousands of vans on, on the roads and streets out there. The ability to make this kind of impact with speed and scale is central to our mission at Bright Drop and central to helping global fleet customers reduce delivery costs, optimize operations, and meet carbon reduction goals. Expanding Bright Drop manufacturing is critical to delivering on existing orders. We have over 25,000 Ziva reservations and letters of interest from some of the world's biggest brands already, and we're just getting started. With the retooled CAMI facility, we have the capacity to deliver on that number many times over. And with steadily increasing customer interest and demand, we're absolutely going to need it. In fact, I'm excited to tell you about the latest customer we're announcing. DHL Express Canada will be adding our Zevo electric delivery vans to their fleet early next year. And there might be a DHL van here today. Thank you, Kathy, for uh, bringing this beautiful van to the place, starting here in just a couple short months, and we're really excited about it. Uh, in addition to the Zevo, DHL is also piloting our Trace e-carts. We've got some, a Trace e-cart back there for you to see, and software, the, Trace, uh, the uh, uh, Bright Drop core in Toronto today, with additional regions to follow. So as Bright Drop's international expansion begins with manufacturing in Canada, we'll also be serving a new international customer in Canada as well a global delivery giant committed to reducing carbon emissions, relieving urban congestion, and meeting net zero commitments. I'm especially pleased by their interest in experiencing the synergies of the Bright Shop integrated platform, the ecosystem of vehicles, electrified containers, and software that deliver additional value when used together. This is a historic moment, not just for those in the room, but for the world. 
Broidrop is now positioned to produce vehicles at volume and help us fight climate change at scale, leaving a better place for the next generation. Along with my colleagues on stage today, I'd like to thank Prime Minister Trudeau and Ontario Premier Doug Ford, GM Canada, and both the CAMI team and Bright Drop teams for your efforts and partnership in getting us where we all are today. Thank you very much. participants to get onto the stage. We'll now have time to take questions from media. One question, one follow-up. On a maintenant du temps de prendre des questions des médias. Un question et un question de suivi. On va commencer avec la première question. First question, CBC. Hi there. Um, considering the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. Can we turn up the volume up here a little Sorry. more? I'm barely hearing the, uh, the question. One, two, three, four, Let five, you start six, again. seven. Morning. Uh, considering the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act, will Canada get its fair share of the electrical ve electric vehicle business? Over the past number of uh, years, but quite frankly, uh, for a long time in Canada, we've always focused uh, on being competitive with the U.S. markets. Uh, it's uh, one of our great advantages of Can as Canada, having uh, access to the great market in the United States. Uh, we have diversified increasingly over the past number of years. We're now the only G7 country with a free trade deal with every other G7 country. Uh, but the lion's share of our trade will always be with the United States. Uh, and that's why we're focused on making sure we're competitive. There's lots of reasons Canada's competitive. Uh, whether it's uh, our health care and our educated workforce, whether it's our resources, uh, you know, so many advantages that Canada has. But we also know uh, that we do need to be making investments and uh, drawing in countries and companies. So we'll continue to do that. Our focus is on remaining competitive. Uh, and uh, as you can see from this announcement today, uh, companies in the United States and around the world are always very interested uh, in taking advantage of all that Canada has to offer. C21 raised a lot of criticism. Would you consider bringing in some changes to the prohibited list of weapons? Uh, let's be very clear. Um, we made a commitment to continue to move forward with strong, smart gun control uh, in this country, to keep communities safe, uh, to keep Canadians safe. And we're going to continue to do that. We move forward with a national freeze on handguns. Uh, and a few years ago, we banned military-style assault weapons. Uh, sorry, banned uh, assault-style uh, weapons. We're going to continue to do that. Now, we've just put forward uh, a list, and we're consulting with Canadians on that. We're hearing a lot of feedback around concerns that uh, hunters uh, are saying about guns that they use more for hunting or uh, hunting rifles or shotguns. Uh, and that's what we're listening to feedback on now to make sure that we're not capturing uh, weapons that are uh, primarily hunting weapons. But we all know that we need to make sure that guns that are designed to kill the largest number of people as quickly as possible have no place in Canada. And we're going to continue to move forward with that in a strong and smart way. We'll continue to listen to Canadians. We're not going after uh, hunting rifles or shotguns. Um, we are targeting the most dangerous weapons, the weapons that were used in places like Ecole Polytechnique or, uh, uh, or recently in South Simcoe uh, or in port uh, that have caused far too much uh, tragedy over the past many, many years. Uh, so we're moving forward in a responsive way. Uh, some uh, conservative politicians at the federal level want to uh, restore military-style assault weapons. Uh, we're not going to let them do that. We're going to continue to keep communities safe in a smart way that respects uh, law-abiding gun owners. En français, s'il vous plaît. En français. En français. En français. Um, on a pris un engagement il y a bien des années de continuer à garder nos, nos communautés en sécurité, et on va toujours le faire. Uh, on a avancé avec uh, uh, un gel uh, sur le marché des armes de poing, et on avance uh, avec. Uh, une interdiction totale sur des armes de style d'assaut. Mais la réalité, euh, c'est que euh, on va faire tout ce qui est nécessaire pour garder les Canadiens en sécurité, tout en respectant 
les chasseurs euh, et ceux qui utilisent des armes à feu de façon responsable. Mais il y a certains modèles qu'on ne peut pas permettre dans notre pays parce qu'ils ont été créés pour tuer le plus grand nombre de gens le plus rapidement possible. Et donc, nous allons continuer de faire le travail. On est en train d'écouter les Canadiens pour s'assurer euh, qu'on n'est pas en train de capturer des armes qu'on ne devrait pas. Mais on va continuer d'aller de l'avant euh, pour protéger les communautés et on va repousser contre ces politiciens conservateurs qui euh, travaillent avec le lobby des armes à feu et qui veulent ramener le droit de posséder des armes de style assaut dans ce pays. Uh, on va continuer de protéger les Canadiens. Next question, Toronto Star. Uh, hello, my question is for uh, Premier Ford. Uh, it's Marco Ovid from the Toronto Star. I, am, um, I wanted to ask you about the fact that when you first got elected, one of the first things you did was cancel the EV uh, purchase subsidy here in Ontario, uh, saying that you weren't into spending money on uh, uh, helping rich people no. buy expensive cars. No. In the, in the meantime, we've now announced billions, your government has announced billions and billions of dollars to make sure that these kinds of cars and these uh, supply chains are mm -hmm. happening here in Ontario. Are you at all worried that we're now going to produce cars like this here in Ontario and they're just going to go and get purchased elsewhere because people don't have subsidies here? Well, thanks so much for the, the great question. Uh, when I first got elected, people were going out. The taxpayers of Ontario were subsidizing buying vehicles from everywhere but Ontario. So the money wasn't staying there. We took a different approach. We've invested over $12.5 billion in the long, sustainable, long-term sustainable jobs. We partnered with the federal government and through the, the great work of Minister Champagne and Minister Vic Fideli, uh, we've brought back the auto sector. When I foot, first took office, folks, and the auto sector knows this, they chased three, the previous government chased 300,000 jobs out of this province because of the high taxes, red tape, regulations, high electricity costs. We took a different approach. We've cut $7 billion off the backs of companies, uh, take the burden off the companies. And when you create the environment and the conditions for companies to come here and thrive and prosper and grow, guess what? So do the great people here that are working here day in and day out in every single auto plant around Ontario and battery manufacture. That's what we believe in. We believe in investing into the people, investing into technology, and investing into companies like General Motors. And here's a perfect example how that pays off. But thank you for the question. Now, when it comes to... Oh. Can you hear me? Sorry. Uh, now, when it comes to, uh, I guess, encouraging the market, here we have encouraging the manufacturing, but encouraging the market, there are two tools that are widely used both in the United States and Canada. One is, as we were talking about, the uh, purchase subsidy. We see a big one now in the United States with the Inflation Reduction Act. It exists in several other provinces, including Quebec and BC. We also have a mandate, right? There are these mandates that require car companies to sell a certain percentage of EVs. And when we look at the combination of these two tools, the places that have one or both of them sell a lot more EVs. Would you consider either of these for Ontario? Well, first of all, the market dictates and the market's going to be EV. That's what it's going to be. Uh, don't kid yourself. I'm going to be on the phone over the next week with a head of Pierre later, head of UPS, head of FedEx, I think FedEx is getting some, DHL thanking him for that, other businesses encouraging them to buy the EVs right here from the Cami plant. This is an incredibly engineered uh, vehicle and it's environmentally friendly. So it all starts from the critical minerals of the north up, up by the ring of fire, and we look forward to partnering with the federal government that flows down to green, clean steel at Algoma and DeFasco. And by the way, with a great partnership with the federal government, we put e uh, electric arc furnaces in. That's equal to taking two million cars off the road. And then great partnerships with all the auto sector to produce some of the cleanest vehicles anywhere by, with clean energy. We just uh, had a great announcement out in Darlington with the SMRs, the small modular reactors, a 300 kilowatt uh, reactor that, that will produce uh, energy for 300,000 homes. So these vehicles are gonna be, do, be produced with clean steel, clean energy, and great people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question. Good morning. Uh, question for the Prime Minister. Um, despite sanctions against Iran, parts from a Canadian company have been found in Iranian drones being used by Russians in Ukraine. What is the government willing to do to make it more difficult for Canadian parts to end up in these drones? 
We're obviously extremely concerned uh, about those reports uh, because uh, even as Canada is producing, uh, producing extraordinary uh, technological innovations uh, here uh, for around the world, we do not uh, want uh, them to participate in uh, Russia's illegal war in Ukraine or uh, Iran's uh, contributions uh, to that. Uh, that's why we have strict export permits in place for sensitive technology that are rigorously enforced. Uh, and that's why we're going to be following up uh, with this company that is uh, fully cooperating to try and figure out exactly how uh, items that were not supposed to get into the hands of anyone like the Iranian government uh, actually ended up there. We know there, was, uh, there are obvious uh, challenges that it did. Uh, and we're working to solve that and ensure that it doesn't happen again in the future. A uh, quick follow-up for the Prime Minister and the Premier. Um, this weekend, um, the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario said the Red Cross has been called in to help with young patients suffering from uh, respiratory uh, viruses. Expert, experts have been clear that uh, mask mandates would help slow the spread of RSV. Are either of you willing to implement mask mandates and uh, try to take the pressure off of hospitals? Thank you. First of all, uh, as, a, as a father, uh, but also as a, as a leader, I'm extremely worried. Uh, about what uh, Canadian kids are facing right now. Families really worried about whether or not they're going to be able to get their kids uh, to hospitals, not just uh, in, uh, at uh, CHEO in Ottawa, but uh, right across the country. Uh, so we all need to continue our work on making sure we're improving health care systems, uh, making sure we're delivering the results and the outcomes that Canadian parents and indeed all Canadians need. Uh, when it comes to uh, looking at uh, the challenges faced by respiratory illnesses and perhaps a resurgence of the pandemic, uh, we're going to make sure we're listening to the best advice uh, from experts and uh, uh, public health authorities to make sure we're doing whatever is necessary to keep Canadians safe. But of course, I will remind everyone that the number one thing we can all do to keep ourselves safe, to keep our loved ones safe, is make sure that you're up to date in your COVID vaccinations. And while you're at it, get your flu shot. Uh, there's a lot of people getting sick this year, uh, perhaps because we all uh, were so diligent about being safe uh, over the past couple of years and wearing masks uh, that uh, we need to step up again and make sure that everyone's doing everything they can uh, to keep their families, uh, their loved ones and their communities safe by getting vaccinated and making sure they're up to date. Uh, Premier. Thank you. Well, thanks for the question. I've been, been in uh, constant communication along with our Minister of Health. I visited CHEO. I got to give Alex Munter a, a shout out, the CEO over there. He's done an incredible job thinking outside the box. He's brought uh, pediatric experts from Orangen to help out. I want to thank the Red Cross for helping out on the administration side to free up our, our uh, frontline healthcare workers. We're, we're graduating, uh, well, we're actually bringing on this year alone. And we still have a month left. 14, over 14,000 nurses, and some of them are going to be pediatric nurses. We have 30,000 nurses in the hopper in the universities and, the, and colleges. We're building medical schools in Brampton and over in Scarborough. So we're investing over 5.6 billion more into healthcare every single year, and we're throwing everything we can uh, at the healthcare system, including uh, investing over 40 billion dollars in 50 sites across Ontario. Now, CHEO is up in Ottawa. They're, they're the only major hospital that takes care of uh, pediatric care, unlike a place like Toronto. But we will be there for them. And again, uh, Alex, you're doing an incredible job. This guy thinks outside the box. He comes up with the best ideas, he texts them over to me, and then we implement them. So he's uh, doing a great job. But the good news is, talking to the chief medical officer, we're seeing uh, the pediatric uh, illness actually level. Uh, up in Ottawa, they're seeing a spike, but here in Toronto, we're seeing it level off, which is good news. Next. Thank you. Next question, CP. Uh, Sharif Hassan from the Canadian Press. I have uh, two questions, one for Prime Minister Trudeau and one for uh, Premier Ford. My first question is uh, for Prime Minister. Are you at all concerned that Europe's aggressive pushback against the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act could somehow end up endangering the competitive advantage the law affords Canada's auto, in in auto industry? Um, we have uh, a free trade deal with Europe. Uh, 
uh, that we signed a few years ago. And we're continuing to see the benefits of that, uh, which is an advantage Canada has over the United States when it comes to accessing uh, the European market. So that's certainly not something that is uh, uh, going unnoticed in places here like, uh, uh, like in Ontario, where we're manufacturing so many uh, cutting edge electric vehicles uh, and uh, strong cars for the future. Uh, we're always going to focus on remaining competitive. We're always going to focus on making sure uh, that we can sell not just into the United States and manufacture here in Canada for the United States, but also uh, for partners around the world. Uh, yes, uh, it's something we're watching closely and we're engaged uh, with our European counterparts as well as our American counterparts to make sure uh, that uh, we're working together. We know the competition uh, will be there between Canada, the United States, and Europe. But we know uh, that the three areas working together uh, to respond to the needs of the world is going to be in our best interest altogether. We'll continue working with friends to make sure uh, that uh, countries that share our approach, uh, not just on democratic values, but on uh, good labor standards, on environmental responsibility, on uh, understanding uh, responsible supply chains uh, are the ones that succeed uh, into the 21st century. Thank you. Uh, Premier Ford, uh, is using the Red Cross to bail out a, ch a children's hospital like Chio, part of the province's search plan to address the crisis, the ongoing crisis at pediatric hospitals? And I, I got to apologize. It was a little fuzzy there, but it's something to do with Chio. I, I think I answered it uh, okay. last. Let, let me ask it again. Um, is using the Red Cross to bail out uh, children's hospitals like CHIO part of the province's search plan to address the crisis at pediatric hospitals in the province? Well, again, I want to thank Red Cross for stepping up, but we're, we're pouring money, as I mentioned, into the healthcare uh, uh, ministry, unlike this province or this country's ever, ever seen before. We're going to continue investing into our great nurses, into our PSWs, into our doctors, into the medical schools, and into the infrastructure. And I just want to give Alex, a, again, a shout out for doing an incredible job. Um, and we're going to have more nurses, pediatric nurses, spread out across this province. As we saw, over 14,000 uh, new nurses come online here in Ontario in just the last year. 30,000 are in our schools, our colleges and universities waiting to uh, graduate. Yes, a follow sorry, a follow-up question. Uh, do you expect... Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay. The next question, Automotive News Canada. Hi, thanks for taking questions. David Kennedy with Automotive News Canada. Uh, first question is for the Prime Minister. Uh, Canada recently announced changes to how it would review takeovers of critical mining companies, including lithium miners. Was this done because Canada is concerned about losing control of its resources? I think one of the things we're seeing uh, around critical minerals, and it's being reinforced uh, by the fact that Russia went from a partner to Europe to an invader of Europe uh, just earlier this year. Uh, companies and countries around the world are looking at the reliability of their supply chains. We went from uh, a focus on maximum efficiency in supply chains over the past decade to post-pandemic and post-war in Ukraine, looking at reliability, redundancy, and resilience in our supply chains. And on that, uh, Canada is extraordinarily fortunate to have uh, both access to most of the critical minerals that the world needs. The, the world needs for the clean energy transition. The world needs for the new technologies we're bringing in. We have those minerals here. And we're building the supply chains that go with it, whether it's the production facilities, the transformation facilities, the manufacturing facilities, eventually even the recycling facilities. We want to make sure that companies that do business with Canada, that allies who are relying on Canada will be able to rely on us to deliver on our commitments. And that's why making sure we're in control of our critical minerals, we're in control of the manufacturing processes uh, is extremely important. And that's uh, why we are ensuring uh, the integrity uh, and reliability of Canada as a partner. Thanks. And a uh, follow-up for the GM team. Uh, given that the company is now building EVs in Canada, 
what is the company doing to source critical battery material here in Canada? Thank you for the question. So um, first and foremost, we did announce a joint venture earlier this year in Baconcourt, Quebec, where we would process cathode active material. Um, also, just within the last couple of weeks, we've announced a partnership agreement with Valet for nickel sulfate. And what's important about that is they're actually going to be processing the nickel into the form that's necessary to feed directly into that plant in Baconcourt. So that is the first of its kind in North America. Uh, we also have been pursuing partnerships with a variety of other raw mineral uh, suppliers to ensure that we have a robust, sustainable, and secure ecosystem for our battery systems in North America. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. And the next question will be the last from the Post. Uh, David Booth, Post Media Driving. Uh, my um, question would be for Minister Fideli, please. Um, there was an extension of the Volkswagen um, Memorandum of Understanding. Um, they're going to be building a plant here, I think, of some sort. Uh, do we have more information on whether it's a cathode active material plant or if it's an actual gigafactory? And if it's in a gigafactory, how do we get it past uh, the IRA's 45X? Thank you very much for the very detailed question. I can tell you that if you follow our province's social media, you would know that I was with Volkswagen about a month ago, as well as Mercedes and BMW. And so we're always encouraged as companies all over the world look to Ontario uh, for their results. I think the Premier was the one who said it earlier that we've lowered the burden on these companies by $7 billion a year. And that's why they're looking at Ontario. We've attracted $16 billion worth of automotive investments in Ontario in the last 22 months. And people are looking at Ontario to see what's going on there and why, is they, why are they so successful and what is happening in this turnaround. So while we don't talk publicly about any of the prospects we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, I can tell you, if you've been following our social media, you'll have a full understanding of the last eight countries we've been to since the election, the kinds of companies. We post all of the photos of who we're meeting with. And it's very exciting to know that there are companies around the entire globe who are looking at Ontario because we have the critical minerals, whether it's the nickel in Sudbury and other places around Timmins, the lithium in northwestern Ontario, the lithium hydroxide facilities that are being planned for northern Ontario, all the way through the supply chain of our great 700 great manufact parts manufacturers in Ontario, the 500 tool and die and mold manufacturers in Ontario, the 65,000 STEM grads that we produce every year. We have everything they need, so it's no surprise that companies like Volkswagen are looking uh, at places like Ontario. Thank you, and that concludes today's press conference. All right. Thanks, everyone. Refresh.